can see a tiny spark. So we have a very weak spark. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Got a mobile call for a golf cart. This is a 2004 Easy Go. It's gasoline powered. Owner says, uh, was it flooded down? Or it was in, in the water, in the puddle it was or something? In the wa water. Uh huh. And it doesn't start. Okay, cranks over, doesn't start. So, first thing we do, check for spark. Now there's a little problem with the foot switch, so when you turn the key on, it'll crank. And waste spark system, you can see a tiny spark. So we have a very weak spark. I'm like, it sure looks like a bad ignition coil. Now a simple check we can do is, you know, if we didn't see a spark, you just plug in a test light instead of the ignition coil just to check if we have power and control. So we expect a blinking test light when we crank the engine over. So just, the, you know, 300 milliamp. Yep, go ahead. Oh, let's see here. So sometimes it cranks, sometimes it doesn't. There we go. So, yeah, it's flashing. So we have control, we have power through this ignition coil. All right, you can shut it off. So like, that's it, we're done. Order a new ignition coil. For this thing, it was over $200 for the OEM coil, but the owner says he wants it fixed, so we ordered a brand new coil. Here it is. Plugged it in, still no spark, or very, very weak spark. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> got, got burned again. Sometimes you actually need to take the time and see what's going on with the voltages on both wires. There's a power and a control. So let's plug in the original coil. And by the way, owner already tried a new igniter box. I mean, that didn't work. So now we tried a new coil. That didn't work. This just shows you that that parts cannon will get you every time. So let's see on the scope exactly what is going on with these wires. So coils plugged in. We got two channels. So the red is the power feed. The white is the control. And I'm going to put a current clamp on the white wire to see how much current is passing through this coil. So we have three channels. The first channel is our current clamp. We expect about you know up to 10 amps on this coil, maybe 5 amps. So one volt is 10 amps and then the green and the red, the red should be uh, the constant, let's see here, um, the white Channel 2 is going to be our control, and channel 3 should be constant power. So the green should be battery voltage. All right, Don. Okay, so we have some activity. We shut it off. Let's see what's going on. So let's zoom in. So we definitely have something going on. What is this? Garbage. <laughs> Alright, so whenever you see something like this that you don't expect, double check the ground in your scope. It just fell off the battery. It's reconnected. Let's try this again. So 100%. Roll the scope. You can see there's very weak spark. You shut it off. Okay, we got a nice capture now. Let's zoom in. Here we go. So, the red channel, that's our control. The green channel, I assume, I don't have a power, uh, wiring diagram, that should be a constant battery power. You see we're at 10 volts, the control wire drops to zero. Look what happens to our feed. It looks like crap. And look at the current on this ignition coil. It's only going up to maybe one amp. That's not enough. That's why we're seeing a weak spark. You can see the little weak spark right there. So it looks like our feed 
is not able to carry the current for an ignition coil, but it was able to carry current for a small test light. <laughs> wow! It just shows you, simple golf cart, right? How hard can it be? It can really throw you for a loop. Our power feed is dropping out. Now, I already saved this. Very simple, through a fuse jumper, I'm going to provide power to that red wire while this thing is cranking and we'll see on the scope exactly what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to crank it and provide power to that red wire through this bypass lead. Look, it's trying to start. Look at that spark. Take that off. Weak spark. Let's see exactly what happened on our scope. Let's see the good and the bad. Good, bad. Right there, we provided a good power feed. See the green channel is now staying at battery, battery voltage. And look at that nice, healthy current ramp with the original ignition coil. About four amps now. Nine day difference. We need to figure out why this power feed is weak. It can't carry the current. And that's why voltage measurements are the key here. The ohm meter would say, hey, that, that power feed, you know, if you check it from whatever, the connector or the fuse, you wouldn't find the problem. This power feed cannot carry enough current for the ignition coil to make a good spark. Crazy case study. Again, no parts required, I'm sure, but we have to find where that red wire comes from. Without a wiring diagram, uh, it might take a little while. So right down here we have the solenoid, so when you push the foot pedal, the starter slash electric motor, I guess, starts spinning the engine, and when the engine fires up, then that thing acts as a generator. So whenever the foot pedal is down, you get power on this green wire, this light green, and that goes, let's see here. This is our solenoid. The fat wire is right there. We have a fuse. Now we can check what feeds what. For example, take this fuse out and see if our ignition coil loses power completely. Because without a wiring diagram, it's kind of tough to know, you know, what's what. You know, it's a 20 or 7.5 amp fuse. Again, don't see any crusties or corrosion there. It could be one of these crimp terminals. Could be that. We can install a bright test light instead of the ignition coil. And just kind of pinpoint that it's got to be something right here. That's my feeling. Alright, so I relocated the channel to the red wire right here just to make sure it's the same wire as on the coil and it is and it's attached to it's screwed to the terminal on the solenoid right there I'll prove that so when we crank it we'll get the exact same dropouts on that green wire okay now we need to see uh, how that's connected okay so I kinda have a grasp of exactly what goes where so basically, wire from the battery positive comes in here and is tied to this big fat terminal. Red wire comes off of here, goes through a 7.5 amp fuse on this red with a white stripe. That goes into the harness to here. Uh, now this is a little switch for the reverse beeper. And then the red wire comes off of here. This is hot at all times. Goes down to our foot pedal switch, you know, the gas switch, which again has issues. When it comes back on this light green wire, and then the light green wire goes to here, and then the light green turns into a dark green, which goes back into the harness, all the way up to the ignition switch 
which you can't really see the wires on the ignition switch. But when you turn the key on, then the voltage goes all the way back here on this blue wire to this terminal, and then this red wire feeds, you know, first it clicks on the solenoid, and then it also feeds the ignition coil. It's kind of a long circuit, so we're trying to backtrack to where we're seeing this uh, voltage drop. So I'm on the blue wire now, okay? And we're gonna crank it, see if we have the dropout. Yes. So, let's look at that dropout. See the greens dropping out. So, somewhere between battery, the foot switch, and the ignition switch, there is a bad, bad contact. Let's move the probe to the light green wire coming from our foot switch. That could explain Okay, so 100% zoom Key on Yes, you have a drop out. Now I push the pedal Oh no, What happened there? Nope, we still have a dropout. Very interesting. So on this light green wire, we don't see a good voltage. Now, what if we bypass the foot switch and just connect this green lead right here to um, to where? To the hot at all times wire. And then we can check that our ignition switch works, that all the wiring is good except for the foot switch, right? So there's already some modifications here, so let's just touch this to here. Now we should make a good connection, but I'm feeling a little lazy. So look. That's hot. And now, when we turn the key on, yes, we have a great spark. So all our problems are, indeed, with the foot switch, which A, doesn't work, and B, has a massive voltage drop through it. That's it. So now we need to get under the cart, look at this foot switch, see if we can restore it. Uh, no parts required. Well, I got the foot switch assembly off and there's water dripping out of this box. So let's see what's inside. All right, here we go. Yeah, nice. So pretty simple setup. Obviously this little switch is toast and it's not like it wasn't giving us any power, but it wasn't passing enough current through. So we can try to take it apart, but it's not even spring-loaded, looks like. It's probably all rusted up and crappy. And see what, uh, how to fix this thing. So basically what we're going to do is remove this stupid little switch and connect the red wire to the green, and that's it. Everything else will be stuck. So it's basically like removing the silly auto stop start feature on a new car you know when you come to a stop and your foot's off the gas you know the engine usually turns off well this thing is just going to idle if you want to turn it off just turn the ignition key off old school owner's okay with that so we're going to put it back together make sure it runs all right so the final repair here is actually very easy <laughs> we're just going to bypass the foot switch we're going to connect from the harness side the positive to the green, so it's like you're just pressing the pressing the foot switch. So plug that in, and then we'll see if we get a good spark when we turn the ignition key on. All right, here we go. Oh, this thing wants to run. Well, let me put the ignition uh, coil boots on. This thing should fire up. Everything, so everything's plugged back in. Turn the ignition key on. 
Crank's great. Give it a little choke. There we go. It got smoke. You see the CVT pulley. That's cool. So it works. And if you want to shut it off, so it'll just idle. When you're not in gear. You didn't idle before. Should be good to go, Don. Okay. What, what, what do you think? All that trouble for for that stupid switch. All yep. original parts. No, no, no parts required. We just took some parts off. <laughs> Extra parts. Yep. You don't need them. <laughs>